Black Lives Matter, Me Too, LGBT plus rights. We are living in an era where we are shaped by our identity more than ever before. The political sphere has been taken over by a phenomenon known as identity politics. Whilst on social media apps, we experience a constant rebrand due to microtrends. This video will explore our obsession with identity, yet our simultaneous increasing loss of it. So stick around if that sounds interesting to you. Identity is one of those words which we all use but don't necessarily always understand. Dr. Sharam Heshmat says that identity is largely concerned with the question, who are you and what does it mean to be who you are? But if you think about the scope in which the term can be used, it seems to go deeper than just that. James D. Fearon argued in his essay, What is Identity as we now use the word? That identity is presently used in two linked senses, which may be termed social and personal. In the former sense, an identity refers simply to a social category, a set of persons marked by a label and distinguished by rules deciding membership and alleged characteristic features or attributes. In the second sense of personal identity, an identity is some distinguishing characteristic or characteristics that a person takes a special pride in or views as socially consequential, but more or less unchangeable. In Fearon's first definition of identity, of social identity, there are also different types of identity, such as ethnic identity, national identity, political identity, gender identity, religious identity and professional identity. There is also an identity linked to an affinity to certain groups with a common interest. Personal identity, on the other hand, is something a lot more difficult to define and with a lot more scope. Fearon defines it as a set of attributes, beliefs, desires or principles of action that a person thinks distinguish her in socially relevant ways and that a a person takes special pride in, b a person takes no special pride in but which so orient her behaviour that she would be at loss about how to act and what to do without them or c the person feels that she could not change even if she wanted to. Using Fearon's definition, if I have understood it correctly, I could define my identity as either a the fact that I am a vegetarian I couldn't eat meat because I would perceive it to be inconsistent with my identity. B, the fact that I am naturally inclined to essay subjects than STEM. Although I wish I was a woman in STEM, I would be at loss about how to act if I denied my history nerd identity. Or C, the fact that I suck at sports. My argument throughout this video is that although our sense of social identity is growing more and more, we as individuals have lost our sense of personal identity. And this loss is exacerbated by social media sites such as TikTok. Big social issues today all point to a rise in collective identities which therefore shape our political views. Our increasing rooting of our identity in social groups has led to a rise in what we call identity politics. Current issues such as same-sex marriage, police shootings of unarmed black men, trans people in bathrooms, the fluidity of gender, and discussions about rape culture are typically the kinds of issues people mean when they refer to identity politics, according to German Lopez writing for The Vox. Francis Fukumaya argues that our social identity and our political views that are shaped by these groupings have now overtaken other determiners such as class. What we call identity politics grew out of the social movements of the 1960s around the demands of African Americans, women, gays and lesbians and other marginalised groups for recognition of their dignity and concrete remedies to social disadvantages. These demands have evolved over the years to displace socioeconomic class as the traditional way that much of the left thinks about inequality. The 2020 general election in the US shows that factors such as race, gender, religion and a self-declared political philosophy are more significant factors in predicting voting behaviour than wealth. 87% of African Americans voted Democrat, as did 65% of Hispanics and 61% of Asian Americans. 58% of white voters voted for Trump. 57% of women voted for Biden, whilst 53% of men voted for Trump. 85% of conservatives backed Trump and 89% of liberals backed Biden. 76% of white evangelicals supported Trump, and 65% of those without a religious affiliation voted for Biden. Class, however, is a significantly less of a swaying factor. Only 54% of those earning over $100,000 per annum voted for Trump, and 55% of those earning under $50,000 per annum voted for Biden. In the UK, between 1945 and 1970, 66% of the middle class voted Conservative, and 62% of the working class voted Labour. However, the elections of 1983, 1997, 2010 and 2019 in particular show evidence for class dealignment. 
people no longer vote according to social class. All of this evidence points to the fact that we are growing in our social identity groups. Although our affinity to class is diminishing, we are increasingly identified by gender, race, political ideology and religion. Although with these statistics I did focus primarily on the recent US election, I think it's safe to say that the UK and a lot of the rest of the world follow the US, and so the trend regarding identity politics in the US can be applied to the global West. It's clear that we are firm in our social identity and feel very comfortable in letting these identities direct our political views. But what about personal identity? If you answer more than five of these questions, there's a good chance that you might actually have OCD. Well, here's three signs that you might actually have ADHD. Do you have a lucky number? Do you ever find yourself counting things? Are you afraid of dying? I'm sure that if you're a TikTok user, you will have seen one of these kinds of videos. It's difficult to escape them. Our phones have become overloaded with a plethora of videos telling us that we may have every disorder under the sun. On one hand, the accessibility of information can be beneficial to individuals who are struggling with their mental health and do not have access to a mental health professional to get the help that they need. Lovin Mosley, a psychologist at Boston Medical Center said that people want to feel like they are part of a community or they are looking for something to explain why they don't fit in or why they behave in a certain way. But on the other hand, as Jessica Brenner, a licensed clinical social worker, explains, TikTok self-diagnoses can be harmful because they prompt people to give themselves inaccurate labels. It's not a good way to go through life, she said. It can completely alter how someone thinks about themselves. Hello, my name is OCD, or hello, my name is depression. People seem to forget that displaying a symptom is very different from possessing a disorder. In medical terms, a disorder is a disturbance of normal functioning of the mind or body, according to the National Cancer Institute. You can have a low attention span. I mean, we all do nowadays, but that doesn't mean that you have attention deficit disorder. I saw a comment on TikTok a while ago that really stuck with me. It was something along the lines of, it feels like we don't get to be human anymore. There will always be some kind of label that someone can stick on you with a diagnosis explaining your behaviour. This is the issue that has been caused by our obsession with labels and categorising mental health. We have no sense of identity because every little quirk or weird trait we possess that makes us unique is micro-analysed and leads us to think that there is a label to explain such behaviour, putting us into a social grouping where we can form a social identity. Equally, we have an obsession with putting labels onto other aspects of our identity that are less easy to categorise, such as race, gender and sexuality. Medical News Today lists 29 different types of sexualities with subgroups, some being cupiosexual, libidoasexual, autoromantic, demisexual, gynosexual, omnisexual, pansexual, polyse polysexual, scoliosexual, and spectrosexual. On one hand, labels can be a great way to identify shared experience, as Evolve Treatment Centre explains that for some LGBTQ teens, finding people as much like them as possible is an important part of understanding their own sexuality or gender. That's why some LGBTQ people favour having as many labels as necessary to describe different groupings of traits and experiences. However, a pressure to put a label on your sexual attraction can arguably stifle our individuality, limit fluidity and create unnecessary barriers. Harry Styles told Better Homes and Gardens in April 2022, it's about not having to label everything, not having to clarify what boxes you're checking. Tiana De Nicola and Sophie Dunn of She, Shifting Her Experience, write that when you put a label on yourself, it can limit how you view yourself. It's common among a community of people for individuals to copy what other members of the group are doing. Thus, labelling yourself can often lead to blind conformity or putting pressure on yourself when influenced by a group. Going back to Fearon's two definitions of identity, it seems that in the realm of sexuality, we're taking an issue that should pertain more to the personal identity category and putting it more into the social identity category. This can be observed in many other spheres, race and nationality being two examples. As a woman of a multiracial descent, born to two Brazilian parents, but who spent most of my life here in the UK, I felt a huge amount of pressure to categorise my racial and national identity. I'm still not 100% comfortable with which term I should use to describe my race, and I'm in a constant debate as to whether it's fair to call myself Brazilian when I'm labelling my national identity. The bottom line is that these factors all make up a very unique personal identity that I possess, and in attempting to neglect parts of my identity to be able to fit into a group and have a social identity, I'm throwing important parts of my identity away.
Shock Academia Girl, Downtown Girl, Coconut Girl, Clean Girl, It Girl, That Girl, Cottagecore Girl, when will we be free from the shackles of aesthetics? When will we be able to have a personal style, personality and personal identity without having to fit into a little corner of the internet with a mood board stuck on the lid? Danisha Gaysani said in her video essay, Internet Aesthetics, The Rabbit Hole of Toxic Beauty Perceptions, that images on the internet, as well as experiences, people and outfits, are viewed as something to examine and categorise rather than admired for what they are and as something distinctive. TikTok's hyperfixation with internet aesthetics create identity issues in all of us, as we are increasingly defined by trends, which will be over before you can even fit into them. How can we possibly know who we are if we change ourselves every time a new trend rolls around that we connect ourselves with? When Clean Girl came around, we took up yoga and Pilates, made green smoothies, ate salad, journaled, and spent all of our month's money on skincare. In the click of a finger, this season is all about indie sleaze, partying, grungy ripped up clothes, makeup from the night before, and drunk flash photography. The biggest issue with these trends is that they are not merely aesthetic trends concerned with makeup or fashion. They're personality and lifestyle trends. To ace the dark academia aesthetic, you had to be nerdy, bookish, spending all of your days in the library browsing history archives, or practicing your piano or violin in the music rooms of Oxford University or Edinburgh or some other aesthetically pleasing enough setting. To embody the cottagecore trend, you had to sell your New York apartment to go live in an isolated cottage in the heart of Suffolk, surrounded by no one but your cow and duck companions. These trends require us to change the core of our very lives and our very beings. The Oxford English Dictionary defined identity in 1989 as the sameness of a person or a thing at all times or in all circumstances. The condition or fact that a person or thing is itself and not something else individuality, personality. And Wendt described identities as relatively stable, role-specific understandings and expectations about self in 1992. According to these understandings of identity, we have next to none. In a society obsessed with moulding ourselves to fit the latest social media craze, we completely lose sight of our sense of self and personal identity. As of the latest data, 57% of TikTok users are female and 43% are male. In a similar vein, the majority of TikTok creators are also female, with 53.79% being female and 46.21% being male. According to Pew Research, women are more likely to use picture sharing forums, whereas men are more likely to use online discussion forums. This means that women are more vulnerable to the loss of identity through aesthetic and lifestyle trends. And it's obvious when you stop to think about it. Current and past trends include clean girl, that girl, downtown girl, uptown girl, cottagecore girl, it girl, rockstar girlfriend, hey girly girl, bra girl, Mexican fairy girl, ghoulish girl, coconut girl, visco girl, dark academia, and old money. Bar the last two, they are all catered to and aimed at femininity. In her brilliant book, The Beauty Myth, Naomi Wolf argues that as women release themselves from the feminine mystique of domesticity, the beauty myth took over its lost ground, expanding as it waned to carry on its work of social control. The book argues that beauty standards have replaced enforced domestic life as a tool to ensure social control over women and to preserve the system of patriarchy. We are now entering an era in which the beauty myth is perhaps losing its grip on us. The body positive movement, although not entirely successful, has shaped womanhood and liberated many of us from the reign of diet culture. The uplifting of the female gaze and the feminist notion of developing a personal style for us, not for men, has given many women the space and control to express their beauty in a way which they enjoy and take pleasure in. More of us are becoming aware of the dangers of pornography and do not view plastic surgery as empowering. So the systems must shift to preserve oppressive structures. One way of doing so is through microtrends. Preoccupy women with trends they simply cannot keep up with, and that will keep them busy. Women are in an everlasting loop of shifting and reinventing ourselves in order to stay relevant, stay trendy, and keep attention. It's not cool to wear a scrunchie on your wrist with a hydro flask anymore. God, are you stuck in 2019? This boxing of female identity stifles our individuality, leaves us with no sense of self, and therefore subordinate to patriarchal structures. Back to fear as definitions, identity can refer simply to a social category, a set of persons marked by a label and distinguished by rules deciding membership and alleged characteristic features or attributes. 
or it can refer to some distinguishing characteristic or characteristics that a person takes a special pride in or views as socially consequential, but more or less unchangeable. We are so comfortable with our social identity that we're losing sight of our personal identity. In a world that is more and more individualistic, focusing on the self rather than the group, focusing on personal growth and personal goals and personal gain, we actually have no idea who we really are. Wolf writes that to combat the beauty myth, a woman wins by giving herself and other women permission to eat, to be sexual, to age, to wear overalls, a paste tiara, a Balenciaga gown, a secondhand opera cloak or combat boots, to cover up or to go practically naked, to do whatever we choose in following or ignoring our own aesthetic. In order to break free from the obsession with trends and labels and boxes in which we put ourselves in, we must allow ourselves to explore our own personal identity to break free from the never-ending cycle of changing yourself to fit the new lifestyle everyone is obsessing over and figure out what you really enjoy doing. To stop overthinking which label to put on yourself and allow yourself to freely live your life and explore your ever-changing, wonderfully fluid identity. To enjoy the wonderful way in which your identity is shaped by every experience that you have and give yourself permission to enjoy one thing one day and hate it the next. Only when we liberate ourselves from our fixations on categorizing our identities will we be able to explore the intricate complexities of our niche personal identities, which are like none other. If you've made it so far, thank you so much for watching up till now. And I really hope that this video has challenged you to think of your personal identity outside of the box. Please comment below to start a discussion and let me know if you agree or disagree with anything that I've said. And I hope that you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.